Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining Sue Atkins and I um, for this special Christmas um, uh, interview that we are having. My name is Soila. I'm the founder and editor of the divorce magazine.co.uk. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm wearing my red and my sparkly, you know, green and red and <laughs> Christmassy colors, trying to be. And, uh, and we have Sue Atkins. And I'm sure most of you know who Sue Atkins is, but I will let Sue Atkins tell us who she is. Oh my goodness. Uh, well, I'm Sue Atkins. I'm the author of Parenting Made Easy, How to Raise Happy Children, and a number of books, but I've just launched actually a Parenting Made Easy app this week. So um, that's what I've also just been creating. So I specialise also in the five-step self-esteem solution, helping families go through divorce as yeah. well. And tell us a little bit about your app. I was so excited to see it, actually, when you sent it the email through. Uh, well, yes, it's really, it's called Parenting Made Easy, How to Raise Happy Children in a Way, with sort of tips, strategies, techniques, ideas, all around raising happy kids, and also looking at your discipline, how to oh. make them behaved. Um, so you can go and play with that, it's free, and it's got an audio section where you can listen to about five or six different um, tracks all around raising those sort of happy, well-behaved kids. And then it leads you down through all my blogs and articles, videos, podcasts, and uh, all of that sort of thing, and it's updated through my website. Okay. So it's a wealth of resources, really. Mm -hmm. So just pass it on to all the people that you think might find it helpful and handy. Okay, and how can, how can we get it if somebody wanted to get it? On my website, thesueatkins.com, and there's an icon there of uh, an iPhone uh, with Parenting Expert app. You just mm -hmm. click on it and uh, you can download it immediately. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Sue. Thanks for letting us know about that. So, yeah, what, what I when I contacted you about um, doing the interview, it was really about Christmas. As you know, it can be a really difficult time for so many. And I thought particularly about the families that are going through divorce or are going to spend their first Christmas no longer as a family unit so where the kids and the moms the dads are all you know they're, they're split they've split up and um i thought maybe you could just give us some tips on how to manage the co-parenting during christmas the first christmas as a divorced family yes well it's a difficult time um because you may be feeling rather vulnerable yourself so i always start with the mum really uh it's that principle of you know when you're an aeroplane and something goes wrong, they, they tell you to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. And there's a reason for that, because if you can't breathe, you can't look after your child. So if you are looking after your needs, because it is busy, stressful, it is lonely, you are maybe a bit frightened, it is all different, it's all new, and you might feel a bit wobbly. So make sure you've got support, make sure you can go and talk to somebody or have friends around that will listen, um, so that that you're in a calm, centred place first, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and put at the centre of the whole process uh, dignity and respect. Go into a business-like mode with your ex because there are huge amounts of emotions that you haven't probably processed yet. As you know, I've got a popular blog called The Seven Stages of Healing yeah. from Force, and it's very popular because I feel there are seven stages that you go through. And eventually, and it's not linear, it's not like a broken arm, uh, you know, um, that's going to be fixed in six weeks. This takes as long as it takes you. And I believe you have to do what I call do the work because you're going to be raw at this time, perhaps. Even if it was your decision, you will, you know, find yourself mixed emotions at different times. And Christmas, of course, is a family time. Mm -hmm. And that brings up all sorts of emotions for everybody. Even if you're divorced a number of years, it can still mean that you have to handle Boxing Day on your own. Or Christmas Day on your own if you've agreed to swap over. And New Year is the same because it, it, it brings up all oh, new beginnings. Oh, isn't everybody happy and having a great time? Oh, I'm by myself. So preempt it. Um, you know, take yourself off to a friend or go and book into a hotel and have a, a facial if you can afford it. Or just make sure you've got someone to go for a dog walk or something, whatever it is for you, but be prepared. So certainly I think um, with children and your ex at this very sort of difficult time um keep it kind of simple don't over complicate it and keep on thinking all the time what would love do now and what what do my children need from me at this time and try and park up your own stuff because you're the grown-up you know yeah we've kind of lost your, your oh there you are yeah and and um i know when when i went through my divorces a couple of times i have 
enjoyed being completely on my own over Christmas, entirely for three days, just being in the house. I've bought my food, I've got my wine, I've got my champagne, I've got my biscuits and everything, and my films, everything, and just enjoyed that as well. Well, you see what you've already done there, though, is prepare. Because they know I've lined up my films. That even those simple things, duvet days, you know, in your pajamas, um, can be fantastic if it's your choice. Yes. But what I'm also saying is, if you suddenly find yourself in pajamas on Boxing Day and you didn't really plan it and you're missing the kids, then don't have that preempt it. But what you were saying there is that you are snug and warm and blessed and okay. Yeah. You know, it's that kind of duvet moment, which is good fun, if it's your choice. So preparation is one of the biggest keys to having a good good enough Christmas with your first divorce, first separation. Yeah, and you be relieved, because you may well, although you have the romanticised view of Christmas, if you remember back to last Christmas, perhaps it was just absolutely fuelled mm. with anger and stress and all the rest of it. So take a breath and go, well, at least I've moved away from that. You know, so start looking. I'm a great believer in focus. You get what you focus on. So if you focus on being grateful for things, uh, simple things like when I put my heat, when I come in and I put my heating on, I always feel very blessed that I can afford to have my house warm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because I went through a difficult time when I went through my divorce, and sometimes I was a bit cold, and nothing makes you feel worse, I think, than being cold. So it's the small attention to detail that can actually focus you down on. No, this is great. This is great. And write it down. Don't just say it mm -hmm. because I. I think it shifts your mindset into one of gratitude and then you actually count you know count your blessings really and if i mean i'm not sure how um, easy a question this is but parenting over christmas when you're going through your pain and your hurt whether it's the dad or the mom whoever's got the children that weekend and just how how do you bring yourself back to being the parent that you want to be as opposed to you know um not focusing entirely on the children. I'm not sure if that's come across as... Well, I'm, you have to get a balance in everything and you have to take good care of yourself and then you also have to realise that this is a process, not an event. And you are at the beginning, perhaps, of the process this Christmas and just see yourself where you're trying to get to. I often suggest to the clients that I work with on one-to-one, on -one, um, for example, one client this week, I suggested that she downloaded a house that she liked the look of. She's been looking to move and waiting to sell her house for a long time. Uh, so get something that represents the little cottage that she's looking for and the beams or whatever it might be and put it up somewhere where she can sit in the kitchen if it's not controversial, uh, you know, where she brushes her teeth or something in the bathroom. So she's constantly focusing on where she's going because you can get very stuck. And, of course, if you've got difficult things like you've got to try and sell a house and you can't sell it and all the rest of it or your ex is being very you know, difficult, um, it's very easy to get down. And down, you don't make good decisions when you're down. You're better when you are calmer and when you're feeling better and feeling more positive. Mm -hmm. So have a little something that symbolises where you're trying to get to. And know that in time, if you take small steps, you will get there eventually. And that will lift your spirit to know that's the next place that you're trying to get to. And you're not just stuck here now. So there are three things you've mentioned. Prepare. Yes. Writing down. And, um, and visualization, so using visual um, photos or props or something to remind you that this is just a process. It's not, you're not staying where you are, you're moving forward. Well, and it may feel that you've got stuck or you've had to take three steps back, but remember that it is a process and that you are steadily moving forward. And this time, even next year, take yourself out there. When I, I do a timeline, I do timeline therapy with people and take them out on their timeline and turn them around and look back. Look how far you've come. So that helps you then process that, yeah, well, by this time next year, I will have done X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. And that then will keep you optimistic. OK. And uh, what about if you have an ex who's being just horrendously difficult? Well, yeah, that is very, very challenging. I meet lots of uh, people I've with going through that um, because, you know, they're hurt, they're angry, they're defensive or whatever they are. So the only person you can control is yourself. Mm -hmm. So I teach this uh, technique called the one point where I take my clients down to 
put their legs down th- as if they're the roots of a tree. They're kind of grounded, solid, slightly apart. Shoulders back. It's a good positive stance. Look above the horizon. Focus on their breath. Breathe in a nice colour that makes you feel confident and hopeful. Breathe out anxiety and stress. And take your energy down below your tummy to a place which is called your one point. It's actually your centre. You can't be moved either way. You are very grounded and centred. And from here, say a positive mantra like I'm relaxed, I'm calm, I'm okay, I'm safe, or whatever your mantra might be. Because you can't control the ex who is probably, you know, flailing around like a boat on the top of the ocean. You could also imagine yourself like the anchor at the bottom of the sea. He can be or she can be flailing around here with anger and all sorts of stuff. But you are grounded and centred. And it's it's quite important to be that. And in fact, that takes everything down a notch or two. And your children actually observing the pair of you will feel safer with you Mm -hmm. because you are calmer and you are centred and you are grounded. And it isn't easy. Don't get (laughs) me wrong. That is not easy, but it's worth it. That's what you've got to keep inside your head. And I think, yeah, and I think with practice also, you get to, yeah. And and, um, I was just thinking as as you were speaking about something that I read once about... um, Christmas being a time where you can start your own traditions. You can do... I write about that. Yeah, oh, I think really? it's an opportunity. Yeah. Absolute opportunity to create new traditions. Often I, when I'm working with, you know, mum and the kids or something like that, uh, I said, well, what would you like? Oh, well, we'd love a real tree. We've never had a real Christmas tree before. We always had that one that came down from the attic that was a pretend one. So go and start the tradition of off you go down to wherever you buy your tree, make a kind of a, you know, a big tradition of it, make it all important. Isn't it exciting? Putting the tree into the, you know, the, the, the base, uh, decorating the tree, put on Christmas. Christmas music, whatever, it's very simple, not expensive. But these are your new traditions. You know, hang your stockings up in a certain place. Start. I remember with my own divorce, uh, we started something on Christmas. I talked to my daughter about it, actually. I was in Manchester yesterday, and I said, oh, yeah, we've got to do Eggs Benedict now, haven't we, um, you know, on Christmas morning. And we get up, you know, and we all help each other out. We all do our own thing and sit around, have carols, and sit in our onesies or whatever our tradition is, uh, and created new ones. So it's an opportunity. Opportunity. Yeah, mm-hmm. and keep some of the old ones if they are special to your children, because you're building a bridge of transition while you're going through change. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you very, very much for all that important tip, the, the important tips and advice about um, Christmas, first Christmas as a separated parent, as a divorced parent, keeping an eye on the kids, and just actually allowing yourself to 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 grow during that moment and to believe that you are moving forward. Um, uh, and preparation, I think that's the biggest thing. Just prepare whatever it is. Don't 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 get caught short and wake up, like you're saying, on 26 in the morning and you're thinking, okay, it's Boxing Day. What do I do now? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, Chris Christmas. <laughs> we got Christmas on the brain. Christmas Listen, the brain. I've got some new cards launching oh. in January called um divorce conversations and it's about co-parenting exactly oh, oh. so i've got the legal pack out at the moment and i've got the talking to children about divorce cards at the moment the think ones very yeah you know these um my cards yes 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 i've seen those yes yeah. I, actually or cards but they just get those difficult tricky conversations started so look out for those because they're, they're coming soon and that hopefully they will help you too yeah t- tell us about the the core parenting cards those ones what yeah. well the the conversational cards there's 48 of them they're simple questions to help you find your own answers oh, okay but it gets you thinking in a different way. Perhaps you haven't thought about that. It gets you sort of analysing your style. What do you need to change? And it's pretty simple. Um, but if you get those packs, you can have a cup of coffee and sit down and read through them and then think, oh, yeah, OK, I'll bring that one up. Don't You don't have to assimilate them all in the one moment. Uh, t- turn them over every so often as well, yeah. because every three months or two months or however, you know, Just, you change. Yeah, yeah. But it, change circumstances change so all these cards that I've created are are very inexpensive but they're one way I feel I can help families start those difficult conversations Mm -hmm. and find your own answers to them because they're not about me telling you what to do they're about 
finding your own solutions because every family is different, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. nice to be able to do it your way. But yeah, they, they're available on my website um, under divorce. So go to my shop and have a look down. And I'm very passionate about those because they really can help a lot of people. Okay, um, because I, uh, sorry to, to go on a little bit, but because I feel so greatly about um, co-parenting, the divorce is, I always say it's important, but how you manage it beyond is what's even more important for the kids. You don't want that to be the story of their life. It can be, oh yes, my parents got divorced, but I'm okay. I do want to get married. I do, you're not like, you know, for years to come where they're like, no way, my parents' divorce was horrendous because it carried on forever. So the cards you're talking about, because they sound like it's making you self-aware and um, yeah, okay. <coughs> that because what you you know what do you want your children to, to yeah. say about the divorce 10 years from now right I think that take yourself out there and go oh my god that was horrific and they're in therapy at 40 yeah. or you can do it with dignity children do survive and they do thrive through a divorce mm -hmm. it's the level of conflict that they experience that can damage them so my cards are all about trying to you know reduce the level of conflict through a difficult process yeah. and keep conversations going and you are right I call it doing the work you call it being self-aware mm -hmm. I, I think that it's just helping you to manage your emotions too to make sure that your children because you're giving them a blueprint for love you mm -hmm. know and you don't you know you did love that person um, for a while and you love them perhaps for a long time uh, so it's about handling it with dignity because they will learn a lot from how you handle conflict oh, absolutely and can I just ask you you don't have to answer this question Sue but can you give us an example of what your co-parenting agreement was you know when you went through your divorce how did you I was very lucky in many ways in that um my husband and I didn't fight over stuff. It, it, it just come to the it sort of had just come to the end of its journey, mm -hmm. and my children were older. They were um, sort of sixteen, seventeen, and nineteen. Okay. Um, so my son had gone to university as well, and and my husband, uh, my ex, you know, we we did sit down together and sort of agree. We had similar values all the way through our yeah. journey with our children. So those values didn't change. And even now, um, you know, we will communicate by email um, about something that might be happening with our kids. Yeah. Uh, to make sure because we still put the children at the center it's not about us and it's been you know three or four years now so that the the emotional charge on it has, has dissipated because it does as mm. you go through um, but always the children at the center and um, you know always that line of communication keep it open because you know I had to go to my son's graduation and sit next to my ex quite early on and uh, I wanted it to be about my son's wonderful day not about me mm. and there will come a time my daughter will finish it in another year or so and I want to be able to go again at her graduation and make sure her day is great and don't forget eventually and I'm not hurrying this one <laughs> my son will get married and uh, I will be you know buying a hat so I want to make sure that it's about them not about us yeah okay thank you so much Sue that's all right my thank pleasure <laughs>